Hi guys, welcome to a comparison video between Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. Now to make something very clear from the start, this is not a video to show which game is better than the other. Both games are very different and are great in their own respective ways. What I'm most interested in to see is what aspects of the game have evolved and even paint a very rough picture of what GTA 6 could be capable of. Now this is not the main goal of this video, but certainly an interesting thing to look at. To give some perspective, Red Dead Redemption 2 is the accumulation of a load of previously successful or interesting things. For instance, the weapon handling and mostly the holstering and how you carry your weapons takes influence from Max Payne 3. The Euphoria physics engine is tuned to be the same as GTA 4 and Red Dead Redemption 1, this mainly for stylistic reasons. The seamless cutscenes were first implemented in GTA 5 and Rockstar proceeds to one-up something in their game worlds by making new standards. For instance, the tiny little details, the NPCs, their role within the world and how you interact with them. Of course, there's much more to this game, but let's compare a few interesting features of both games and see where this will lead us to next. I'll be showing gameplay of Red Dead Redemption 2 recorded in 1080p, of course 30 frames a second on the Xbox One X and GTA 5 gameplay at ultra settings on PC 60fps. Now if you did enjoy this comparison at the end of the video, please feel free to leave a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this. Now without further ado, let's begin. What you notice when you're shooting limbs in GTA 5 is that the NPCs tend to flop over quite instantly while in Red Dead Redemption 2 it's much more physics based, the way they fall over, the way they handle themselves, their bodies and of course try to grab their wounds and recover from their falls. On GTA 5's account I'm not taking in the fact that these NPCs fall over and die instantly, although I kind of should, but if you compare like police officers in GTA 5, you'll notice it's the exact same thing, you shoot them in a the limb, they fall over and that's it. They're done, they're on the ground, you can shoot them again, do whatever. There's not a lot of weight to it and we'll be covering shotguns next and you'll see it most notably right there. So let's take a look. It's really hard to make a very gratifying shotgun in a video game and GTA 5 shotgun is not good at all, it's actually pretty bad. This is not because of the shotgun itself, it's a combination of the impact and the physics engine. Everything in GTA is very light, bullets and impact don't hold a lot of weight and combine that with the toned down Euphoria physics engine, you end up with something that doesn't quite feel right. Red Dead 2 on the other hand doesn't completely nail it either, although with with dismemberment it can become a really cool weapon to use. The impact is more or less the same but the main difference is the euphoria engine which has been amped up in Red Dead Redemption 2. An impacting shell makes an NPC fall over but as they are falling they're trying to break their fall and grab their wounds. That's what makes a shotgun in Red Dead 2 better in my opinion. Here it shows the difference in physics again. 
GTA 5 is a lot less violent when it comes to crashes. Comparing these two games is very hard though, but a bike crash should have a lot more motion than a horse crash. If you compare GTA 4's bike crashes to GTA 5, you'll notice it the best. GTA 4 and Red Dead Redemption 2 physics are pretty similar. In GTA 4, you do not stop dead in your tracks after a crash. But I believe it, it kind of comes down to pacing. Rockstar wanted a faster pace for GTA 5, a slower one for Red Dead Redemption 2. So this also goes for like the crashing physics. You don't even go, go there. Go. Fuck off. Just get my <laughs> Well, I think the footage I got for you guys speaks for itself. The hand-to-hand -hand combat was pretty bad in GTA 5. The signature very light kick you give people to knock them down was very unsatisfying. In Red Dead 2, things turn into a real brawl. Again, GTA 4's hand-to-hand -hand combat was actually superior over 5's. So I, I kind of hope they'll add this fighting system into GTA 6 in the future. Hey, hang in there, homie. Hey! What's up, babe? You want some free advice? Never work with actors. You think wow, it's that's awesome? real madness right there. I'm just a fucking glorified babysitter. Hey, what's up with you, man? Hey. What's that? Fuck so you real me. mean, huh? Asshole. You are so dead. Impossible! Ah! What the hell is that? Ah! You know I'm the same fella as before? Oh, it's like that, is it? Oh, like you're so great. You rubbed me the wrong way. Hey, knock it off! What are you gonna do What about the hell? One too many I'm walking away now. My lord, I mean really. So, just go away! How Look at you well, run! Why me? What is really cool to see here is how Rockstar evolved their interactions with NPCs. Thinking back to GTA 5, it was already fun to interact with NPCs, so Rockstar took this system to the next level in Red Dead Redemption 2. This makes me very excited for GTA 6. Even if they just take this system from Red Dead 2 and implement it into GTA 6, it'll be great. But I'd love to see what the next step for this particular interaction would be. The density of both games is very good. Both games feel alive where they need to feel alive. In GTA 5, the distance that NPCs render in is very impressive as well. You can see cars and NPCs really far away. The major difference between these games is what the NPCs do. In GTA 5, they are either standing still or they are on their commute. The off-pedestrian you can find reading, drinking, talking on their phone or doing some sort of other scripted work. The NPCs in Red Dead 2 are more dynamic, but I'll cover that in my second comparison video if you want to see that. Let me know if you do.
As you can see the combat AI has been improved as well. The cops in GTA 5 were quite vicious when they were bundled up around you. But as soon as you cover some distance you'll notice they often fall behind and just end up running after you. In Red Dead the law is a lot more unforgiving. Even if they're not on horseback they'll still find their way towards you and even try to tackle you. Now this will do for my first comparison video for now. If you would like to see how the graphics and other aspects have evolved, let me know and I'll make sure to do a part 2. Subscribe if you are new and please support this video by leaving a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.